Has any redditor been kidnapped? If yes, what is your story? My old teammate got kinda kidnapped. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. Told me a story about when he got kidnapped. Mind you he was a 190 pounds college athlete at the time. Essentially he got carjacked and shoved in his own trunk. But the perpetrators just wanted to use his car for a joy ride. So after a night of speeding, smoking blunts in his car, and doing whatever else, they got pulled over by the police. He said the looks on the cops was something else thinking they were coming up on a routine traffic stop, only to find the driver Rona was in the trunk of the car. I've posted this story before, but here goes. I was in Turkey for a while in my early 20s with two friends. We had made quite a few friends in the coffee shops. They were mostly Kurdish, and I was pretty oblivious to the racial tension there. One day walking through the market, five men walked up to us. The four beefiest surrounded us, while the fifth told us we were invited to tea at his place and to come. He was all smiles, but the beefy dudes and general posture of them all made it clear what the score was. We were escorted back to a shop with a few more scary guys and the patriarch of the family. The doors were closed and bolted, and the window shades drawn down. For the next five hours we were guests. It started mostly outwardly polite and utterly terrifying with polite veiled threats. When they served us tea, we were sure it would be drugged, but couldn't refuse and escalate the situation. It culminated with them trying to hand the three of us swords, while the rest of them stood around us with swords in hand smiling and talking about how some of them had been in the family for generations, and been used to take the heads off of western Europeans in the crusades, bs I'm sure, but the point was taken. I was absolutely sure, if we took the swords they offered, we'd be cut down, and they'd have plausible deniability, and could claim we attacked them, or tried to rob the place. We remained calm, and kept declining the swords politely as they got angrier and angrier. They finally let us go with a warning, to mind who we associated with, because sometimes people disappear. Scariest 5 hours of my life and I have no idea how it ended well for us. When I was around 7 to 8 years old, my mom took me to a karate lesson for the first time. The dojo was in a strip mall. The lesson ended, and as I was leaving the room, for whatever reason I was the last one out, a man approached me asking if I enjoyed the lesson. I told him I did, and asked if he was a friend of my mom. He was dressed normally, not an instructor, and didn't have a kid with him, so I was confused as to his interest in me. He told me he was not a friend of my mom's, but that he and I would be friends. He put his arm around my shoulder, and started walking towards the front door. As we approached the exit, I saw my mom chatting with the instructor in his office through the small window on the door. The office was right next to the exit and the handle within reaching distance. I quickly reached for the door handle, turned, and pushed. The man left my side, and walked out the front door before the door to the office fully swung open. I walked in, and the instructor slash my mom start asking about the lesson, if I enjoyed it, etc. As we talked, I asked about the man. Neither the instructor or my mom seemed to know who I was talking about, and shrugged it off. After we left, I told my mom it wasn't for me, and never went back. It wasn't until a decade later, when I finally grasped the possibility of the situation. Almost, thankfully I was 7 at the time, we were at the boardwalk in New Jersey, when I got separated from my family, while I was looking for them, an older man came up, and said my mom told him to come get me thankfully, there was a family of 4 walking by us at the time my mom always taught me to if I was lost to find a family with children, because they are the most trustworthy option, when you're lost in public as compared. To an individual adult I ran over and yelled mom and I hugged her I think her husband figured out what was going on and yelled at the guy and he ran off. Dad put me on his shoulders and his two teenage kids went down the boardwalk yelling that they had found me. Five minutes later, one of the kids got a hold of my mom and reunited us one of the scariest things I've ever been through. Not me but my roommate at the time. We lived in Johannesburg and studied at the local university. One day I'm at class, and he is at home. He steps outside to get something from his car, it's a typical sablock of flats with tall walls and a motorized steel gate. Some guy climbs over the gate, runs up to him, and throws him inside the house, demands he gets the house keys and drags him outside to his car that was waiting on the street. He then takes my friend on a trip around Johannesburg, 
collecting debts owed to him, can only imagine he is a drug dealer. After a good 6 hours of driving around, my friend is now scared shitless, the guy takes him home, drives into the driveway, strolls into the house, and locks him in his room, while he casually takes a shower. He comes back out, and steals everything from my friend, clothes and all. Makes himself a sandwich and leaves like nothing happened. My friend is still traumatized, and this happened around 5 years ago. Lesson to learn. Always keep your house locked, even if you have fancy security, electric fences and all that jazz. Sometimes this country amazes me. My friend was almost kidnapped once. She had found some people online she wanted to meet. After much debate I agreed to go with her to meet them in a park. Since I had a bad feeling I brought my dog with me, just as a little security measure. They gave my friend alcohol, but didn't drink themselves. After hanging out with them for a while I decided it was time to go. We started walking towards one way and they walked towards the opposite way to their friend, who had came in a van to pick them up. They call out for my friend, to come and meet their friend. Drunk and stupid as she was she hurries over there, and the driver grabs her arm and tries, to pull her into the car. She is resisting, so he drops his grip on her, and she falls back on the ground. It happened very fast, and I was far away from them. So I took of the leash from my dog, and took hold on the collar, and got him all excited. My dog is growling and pulling against them by now, and I scream that I will send the dog on them, if they don't stop. They open the back of the van and tries to grab her again. Then I let my dog loose. My scary looking dog ran growling at full speed against them, and then they let her go, and jumped in the car and drove away. She was lucky that I brought my kind of unstable dog that day. I was 10, and, half, sister 8, stationed with, step, father, and mother in Europe at the time, military from the USA. I was told by my father, that we would eventually be going on a Sunday school trip. My sister and I had pictures taken weeks before, and were told they were for the same trip. Turns out my mother, had hidden our passports and the pictures were for new passports. Sunday rolled around. As we were driving my dad had us guess where we were going. We kept guessing tourist attractions in Europe. Father. He would say, until we guessed correctly. It was to my grandmother's house in the USA. At this point I still, did not realize we were being kidnapped. In fact I didn't realize it until days after our arrival, when I kept seeing our picture in the papers, the front page in many cases. Custody battle turns overseas. A reporter had showed up shortly after our arrival to grandma's house, and I couldn't understand what the fuss was about. The crazy part is that my, step, dad ended up with custody of both me and my sister. I was kidnapped in Houston 10 years ago. Two guys made me get into their car, while pointing a gun at me. They drove around for a few hours, and then dropped me off by some farms outside of the city. The guy in the passenger seat kept the gun on me. I couldn't move. I wanted to scream and run, but I was paralyzed. My story could have been worse, and even though I was not physically harmed I suffer from PTSD because of it. Every time I think about it, I feel like it's happening all over again. That's why I'm writing this now, it's time I start talking about it. Even writing this at work, I'm shaking, my heart is racing, I feel the adrenaline rushing, and somehow paralyzing me. Thanks for whoever reads this. I just had to get it out. When I was 5, I was in a grocery store with my mother. She was looking at something, and I was right behind her, when a man picked me up, and started walking out of the store. He got to the door where a clerk stopped him, and asked if I was his child. He set me down, and ran out of the store. The clerk quietly walked me back to my mom, when she turned around, and asked me where I had wandered off. The clerk never said anything, and I never told my mom until years later as an adult. As I write this, I can still feel the confusion in mind of what was going on and processing why this strange man had picked me up. I can still see the haunted look of desperate yawn and lust in his eyes. I didn't know what I was seeing at the time, but I've come to realize that had the clerk not acted, I would be dead or worse. In college I lived with two other roommates. One was a good close friend of mine, and the other guy a good friend of his. Anyway other guy I don't know super well turns out to be a drug dealer. So one night all three of us go out, and as we are headed home we get jumped, and put into this sub. 
the three guys that jumped us tie us up and tape our mouths, and one guy claimed he had a gun, but I never saw it. They kept asking for the stuff I didn't know rumored was a drug dealer at the time, but then quickly figured it out. He kept saying he didn't have any on him, and then they started asking for money. Luckily I was dating a girl at the time, and we had our locations turned on for each other permanently. She tried calling me, but I didn't answer, and then because of the time of day she checked my location and called the cops to do a check on my phone's location. We were shortly found and all three of the guys went to jail. I have since moved out of that town and cut off all contact with drug dealer Rumert, who went to jail shortly after for DUI and had a large amount of molly on him at the time.